Ladies and gentlemen, just who is Hero 27? I'm Sal Osa and this is Unit Lost and Jeff Kaplan gave an interview to the PC Games N crew at the Bilbao Games Festival in Spain and this is what he said. Let's just leave it at that. A surprise that has perhaps been hinted at. That's what Jeff said when he was asked about Hero 27. Now what makes this interesting is we actually know of various heroes that have been teased and then have suddenly made it to the game. I say various heroes, there is actually one and it is this hero. When we look at this, this is Moira. Now, the ironic thing with this is, I think I actually did speculate at the time that could be a new hero. However, I actually said that that looks like a male Joker-style character. Well, that actually turned out to be Moira. So we now know that they do tease heroes in comics. So this is what I've done in this video, is I've gone through all of the comics to have a look at all of the obscure characters to just to see, you know, are any of these actual heroes in the game? So let's continue with the Masquerade comic. Now... The difference here uh, is this is very clear. This is Maximilian, and he is one of the council members of Talon. We know this from the Masquerade comic. Now, he is very clearly depicted here, and if we look at the other image we've got here, you can see the entire full body shot of Maximilian, and uh, he's clearly talking to Doomfist there. They know who each other are, and this is Doomfist as he's just escaped from prison, essentially coming back to the leadership of Talon. What could Maximilian be? Um, Potentially could be a hero. I mean, it doesn't follow the sort of vague character in the background who's going to actually turn into a hero. But you can see Blizzard are seeding us. They're kind of planting the seeds here to say Maximilian could be a hero. And I think he probably will be a hero in the future. Now, we're going to go to the Dragons comic. This is one of the earlier comics. Um, this is the Reinhardt comic. And this features Bridget. Now, she... <laughs> She's Torbjorn's daughter, and you can see in this comic she's depicted in a in a very interesting kind of way. And then we fast forward to the recent cinematic, which is Honor, and uh, we get this. So you can clearly see they're starting to flesh out the design here of this character. Uh, you can see the Torbjorn cog uh, icon on her shoulder. Uh, again, just signifying that she's an engineer. Um, we know this because she fixes Reinhardt's armor in the Dragon's uh, cinema. Well, the Dragon's um, comic. Um, but again, she shows up in this cinematic. Now, this is again a pretty good shout for a, a, another hero in the game. Could potentially be another defense hero. Could be, you know, straight up. It's just Torbjorn's daughter in the game. She's like Torbjorn and she does sort of Torbjorn y things. I don't know. Um, but again, this, I don't know, it's straight up in our face. It's not really hidden. It's not really hinted. It's just like bang, there's a character. But it is definitely one to consider. This, I think, is a more interesting one. And in fact, now in the video, we're going to go into the more sort of obscure characters, with the exception of maybe one. All right, this is the idea of Hakim. We don't know who Hakim is. What we do know is, though, is that Hakim put up this wanted poster. Identity unknown, espionage, assault, theft, reward, 70 million. This is uh, for Anna's capture. And uh, Soldier 76 was interested in this and all of that stuff. Anyway, we fast forward in this comic and we go to uh, this little bit of dialogue here between Anna and Reaper. Hakim's been trying to draw out the one who's been sabotaging our operations. I never expected that it'd be you, a real ghost. Now this is Reaper talking to Anna as he realizes, oh, actually, this, this person who's been messing up our operations is actually Anna. Notice Hakim though, this is the only reference we really get to Hakim. Could Hakim be a character who's about to be introduced? Another type of talent agent? Maybe just like a talent criminal? We don't really know. Athena. Now, Athena shows up in various places throughout Overwatch promotional material. Uh, she's in the very first uh, Overwatch trailer. Uh, well, actually, I'll take that back. She's not in the very first Overwatch trailer, but she's in the uh, the Winston uh, recall cinematic short. So the first cinematic short is probably what I should have said, because the first trailer, as we all know, took place in the museum with the Doomfist gauntlet. Now, Athena is AI. We think Athena is a good god program. Now, god programs were the programs which controlled the Omnics. Now, this is what resulted in the Omnic Wars. The god programs, these godlike AI programs, take over all of the Omnics and then just basically make them do their bidding and all of that bad stuff starts to happen as a result of that. And then we end up with massive global conflict. However, the Omnics were defeated, the god programs were locked away, but Athena seems to be a good 
god program. At least that's my speculation here. Now, I think we will probably see Athena as a hero at some point. Again, this isn't really one which has been teased at as such. She's just part of Overwatch. Now, when you go into a game of Overwatch, everybody hears Athena. She's the one who does the countdown. Um, she's basically the announcer for Overwatch, Athena. So, I don't know. She could actually make her way into the game. Maybe she's got some sort of, you know, uh, crazy cybernetic body or something insane they can build for her. And I, I don't know. Like, she could literally go anywhere, but she's definitely a good shout for a hero in the future of Overwatch. This is Link 17. Now, I think I've speculated on Link 17 before. This is from the Zarya comic, and he is essentially an Omnic version of Sombra. He's an Omnic hacker. Now, throughout this comic, he takes part in various activities against Sombra to draw her out. Uh, he gets heavily damaged, and Zarya saves him. So he's not actually dead. Um, but he could maybe turn into a hero. We could, we could potentially go down this path of having anti-heroes. So what I mean by that is, yes, we've got Sombra, who's sort of like the evilly kind of hacker, but then we get a good hacker. You know, we get, you know, maybe the good engineer, and then we get the bad engineer. And we'll get onto that in a second, ladies and gentlemen. So talking of engineers, this is Bruce. Um, Bruce showed up in the Roadhog comic and Bruce knows Mako. Mako's obviously Roadhog um, and he's an engineer that's working or as Roadhog believes wasting away inside Junkertown. We don't know who this character is. He just basically showed up in this comic. He obviously has some sort of connection to Roadhog but beyond that we don't really know but he is an engineer so you never know but he strikes me more of a good style engineer and also he looks very similar to Torbjorn and I believe they wouldn't add heroes into the game that looks similar to each other because the silhouette of the hero so the way the hero looks in the game has to be very unique so you can quickly identify oh that's Torbjorn oh oh or is it Bruce I don't know so I don't think we'll see Bruce as a hero ah and sticking with Junkertown we've got the Junker Queen now she is mentioned in the comic because as I said I wanted to take hero sort of hints from the comics in this rather than other sources um this is the only image we have of her this is from a poster on junkertown itself um she is the queen so she's the boss of junkertown she looks like a melee based hero uh, she, obviously she's female um so this could potentially be anything we don't really know uh, to be honest we don't really know that much about the queen all we know is that she rules over junkertown she's got a load of money stashed behind the throne room and she likes to watch uh, mechs fight each other out and she lets you bet on this as well uh, that's basically all we know about and she doesn't like roadhog or junkrat especially doesn't like junkrat um, um, she could be a hero. Again, she's only really hinted at. Um, what makes me think this will be a hero at some point is it kind of follows the path of Doomfist. Now, we know now that Doomfist was never really going to be a hero. The gauntlet was just something they had in the game. Um, but from that, they decided to, well, design a hero that uses the actual gauntlet. And we ended up with Doomfist a few years later. So it is there is potential that the actual Junker Queen will be a playable hero. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, this is where I'm going to put my money. Now, this isn't exactly a subtle sort of hint, right? This is Sven. Now, Sven is a anti-Torbjorn. I think this is the only way I can describe him. This is from the Destroyer comic, which is honestly my favorite comic. I think this is the probably the, the most well done one, with the exception maybe of the Pharaoh comic. I think that was pretty good as well. Sven uh, has taken control of one of the Titans. Now, Torbjorn was uh, involved in the design of these things, and Sven has upgraded this and decided to go in and wipe out one of the um, governments that he believes is a threat to world sort of peace and security. Torbjorn doesn't agree with that, and obviously this is sort of a roguish behavior by Sven. So Torbjorn goes in and, well, stops Sven from doing what he's doing. But if we look at Sven, actually looks really interesting. So he's much taller than Torbjorn, so there would be a distinct difference there. He looks like um, he looks like Yori from Yori's Revenge, or even just from Command and Conquer Red Alert Three, uh, like this mental Russian sort of scientist. I guess he's Russian because his name's Sven. Um, I could actually be Swedish, Nordic. I don't know, <laughs> but. I want to say he's kind of Russian-y. He sort of looks Russian off this artist impression. I don't know. But this goes along with the, the sort of idea that we're going to get potentially an anti-type of hero. So we've got Torbjorn, the good engineer, the good guy. And then suddenly we get Sven, who is not the good engineer. He's sort of this lone agent, does what he likes. And he's a different style of sort of, uh, let's say, 
hero that builds things because I think Overwatch is missing this. And this seems to me the only hero category in the game that isn't really covered. And that's a pet class. That is a hero which can summon constructs that actually follow them around. Yes, you've got Symmetra. Yes, you've got Torbjorn. They build static structures. Imagine if Sven was a hero and he actually could summon like nanobots or something ridiculous. I mean, Moira actually uses nanobots in her bio orbs, which is actually a nice little bit of lore, but Sven maybe could produce like miniature tanks or something. You know, or maybe he could build things which, you know, change the way heroes play. There's a lot of ways you could go with this. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Stylosa and this is Unit Lost and this has been a look at the potential Hero 27. My money is on Sven or at least a defensive hero because we don't have a defense class hero well that's ever been added to the game since the game launched. Now I think the classes of heroes are pretty stupid and redundant anyway but if they are going through classes and deciding to pick you know or, or hero designations go okay let's have an offensive hero let's have a tank hero support hero well, where's the defense hero? I don't know. Maybe we're going to see Sven. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. I've been Stylosa, this is Unit Lost, and this has been an Overwatch speculation video on who Hero 27 could be. You can follow me on Twitter, guys, which is at Unit Lost Gaming. You can subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, and uh, yeah, why not join the Discord, which is discord.gg forward slash Unit Lost, and I will catch you on the next one. Toodaloo.